Okay. Next up. Uh, uh, all right. So next up, um, we're actually going to start doing rotation. Um, <laughs> you heard that, right? <laughs> um, and so it worked. There we go. Um, uh, <laughs> So rotation is going to be uh, based off of planes, right? It's like a planar-based operation. And ultimately what it means is it's going to rotate around the z-axis in most cases. It has to have an axis to rotate. So um, if I have a plane like this, and we've got our x-axis there, our y-axis here, the z-axis is this. So um, the z-axis is what we rotate around. So if there's a square or a rectangle here, and I'm trying to rotate that item, I use this to rotate it this way. You guys get that? OK. Um, so we need to map an axis for it to rotate around. The cool thing is rotation can actually use a number of things as an axis. Um, but we also want to make sure that we're setting like a, a base point for it to operate on as well. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to kind of get down into like the nitty gritty with a few new tools here. But let's go to um, transform and let's go to Euclidean and uh, let's take a look at our options. Um, so we've got rotate an object in a plane, which is pretty simple. It's basically just using the plane itself. We have rotate an object. Um, which one is that asking for? Uh, geometry, center point, uh, initial direction, and final direction. OK, so this is an orient rotate. I don't use this one very often, though. Um, and then we have uh, rotate 3D, which is going to rotate around the axis vector. Um, and then we have rotate around an axis. So um, all of these can be used with one axis or many axes. Uh, it just depends on how you set up the geometry. Um, what we're going to do, um, do I want to use, let's try, let's try using the basic one first um, because then you can visually see the plane that you're operating on. Um, so I'm going to go use rotate uh, on a plane. So we're going to need to rotate a geometry and we're going to rotate an angle in radians and then it's going to ask us for the rotation plane. So set this aside for a moment. Um, we need to talk about a few things. We already, well, actually, you don't know what we're rotating. Um, so what we're doing here is, um, if this is our surface, what I want to create is a, um, a flat on the other side. So this this is static, and it's always going to be tied to the grid. Mm -hmm. This one is going to rotate this point out so that it just flips it up like it's a cut-up piece of paper and you're creating origami or something like that, okay? So I want this to rotate around this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to rotate around this diagonal, um, this diagonal that's going across the side. So we need to find the point that we are rotating, which um, I kind of forget which one it is now, but we'll find that out in a moment. Um, and then we're going to uh, set the plane on that line for it to rotate around. It doesn't really matter where it goes. But uh, first, let's find the point. Let's, that's kind of the low-hanging fruit. Um, let's, I'm going to use this to make it easier. So one thing I want to point out is that like, I click on this, and I can't see any of the points. That's because other geometry has overridden that. Other geometry that I created later is sitting on top of those points. Um, Actually, none of them are visible. Some of them should be. The lines are. Um, I'm going to hide these lines for a moment. Which one is it? All right, so let's drop in a point thing, and let's go here. So that one is that corner. This one is the opposite corner. So uh, it's point number one. So I'm going to call this a rotator point. Rotated point. And I'm going to pull this off to the side. <clears throat> um, 
So we have a point that we're going to rotate. That is going to be the geometry. Then we're going to have to set the plane. Right now it's rotating in the world X, Y plane. Um, so it kind of flipped the thing over. The Y axis, it just kind of whoop, flipped it over to the other side, the whole system. Um, but I want them to all rotate referentially to their own system. So here's how we do that. We have to set that uh, a plane on that line. Um, so let's go to uh, vector and plane, and let's see what options we have. We have... Um, Planes that are going to be oriented to a normal, right, perpendicular to a vector. Uh, we're, we've got a line and point, line and line, three point, construct plane. Um, we probably want to use, well, I think there's a better way of doing this. Aha! Perp frame. Um, so perp frame is kind of cool. What it does is it solves, well, actually, that's a, that's a silly and confusing definition. Um, but it basically maps a plane perpendicular to any curve. Um, so the way this works, let's drop that in there. This is under um, curve analysis. Yeah, curve analysis. I like per perp, perp frame because it um, is really dynamic. Um, so this is new terminology. I want you all to understand this. It's going to ask you for obviously the curve that you're evaluating. Um, that's going to be our um, diagonal curves. And then it's going to ask you for what's called a parameter. Um, it's a very broad statement, but in this context, a parameter is similar to a domain. It goes from 0 to 1.0 or whatever, 1.000, however accurate you want to be. Um, so let's say 0 to 1.00. And let's plug that into T. And here you're seeing a set of planes that are mapping with that geometry at the base point, right? At the base point of one of the base points of the triangle. But as you slide the parameter forward, you're, you're going to see that it'll actually slide across that edge. Okay, so in theory, because this line is straight, it doesn't matter which parameter I use, but I wanted you to be aware that of how parameter works, that you don't think that it's tied to the base point, it's tied to the edge. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at around 50, or I'll just leave it at 50 so it's in the middle. Um, and here's how this is going to work. So that is a frame around which I'm going to rotate. So now they're rotating referential to that plane, but we have to define how far it's going to rotate. Um, so let me turn the perp frames off for a moment. And uh, let's talk about uh, the angle. So are you guys familiar with radians versus degrees? Yes. Yeah, so radians is like how far it's traveling around the circumference of the circle or something like that. I'm an architect, not an engineer. Um, so uh, what's cool is Grasshopper does this work for us. So if you want to work in degrees, which trust me, you do, um, go to math and let's go to trig and let's go to um, radians. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Uh, so what it's going to ask you for is the angle in degrees and it's going to pump out radians. Degrees to radians. No math required. That's why we hire people. All right. So um, I'm going to say 0 to um, 180 on my slider. And plug that into degrees. Plug my radians into angle. Right now it's at 0, but watch as I increase the degrees. Whoop, they all start rotating. Aha. Huzzah! I'm trying to bring huzzah back. Huzzah? I mean, it's like hooray, but it's it's like back in the day. It's like, it's like a renaissance hooray. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, okay, so, so now we've got um, 
kind of the same condition that we had before. If we want to panelize this thing, we have to reconstruct it again. So um, what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to take this whole sort of construction and kind of drop it down to the bottom. Well, yeah, I'll kind of pull it back here, I guess. Um, and I guess I'm going to, oh, you know what? I don't want that because I'm going to use the other lines. I need these. So these are what I want. Um, Yeah, because these are the other side. So we used uh, L1 and L2 on this uh, triangle, the static one. So we're going to want L3 and L4, or whatever they are here, um, on the other one. So now uh, we've got those two edges, and we have a, a point, but we're going to have to remap a point to the original um, two curves. So there's a, there's a um, sort of easier way of doing that, I think. Um, what I'm, the way I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to break apart the, uh, the diagonal line just because I don't want to go back and reference these original four again. Um, so I'm going to go to um, curve analysis and I'm going to use endpoints, drop it in here, and then plug that line in. So now I've got um, the two lines that are creating. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I don't want these actually. Leave those there. We have, uh, we have new points that we want to work with. I'm totally confusing you right now. But, um, so basically, I abandoned these. These aren't going to be used. But um, I'm creating points off of the new uh, rotator point, which is this, and the, um, and the two endpoints for, for that. So basically, see those three? It's like this one, this one, and that one. Does that make sense? It'll make sense when we do it. Um, so here is the rotation I did. And all I've done differently is add this little guy. Um, how are we doing on time? Running a little long. But um, end is from curve analysis. All right. So I want to close the book on this thought before. Um, before I release you guys to just kind of catch up. But, but what you need to know is that we have our rotated point, which is rotating out like this from, from those base points. And then we have the base points that it is, you know, that it is uh, tied to at the base of the triangle. So we're going to create a couple more lines. We're going to go from primitive, right? We're going to, uh, we have our, our cell line, right? We have start to end point, And we have uh, the new point right here. So let's go from um, the new point back to the start point. Creates a line there, right? Do another one. New, uh, the new point back to the end point. Creates another line. So now, as you're looking at this thing, you're going to see that these cells, uh, lines are actually what's rotating up. That's cool, man. But we need one more line in order to create the final triangle, and it's actually going to be the same thing as start point to end point back in the base line, you know, because we need that edge too. Um, so when we map all three of these together, we're going to get that surface. So let's go to surface, boundary surface, whoops, and we're going to plug all three of these in. And now we've got our rotated folding planes. Pretty cool, right? You understand it. You do. OK, so let me recap real quick for you. I didn't really do um, that much different here toward the end. So all I did was map the original surface, which was done with lines that were built off of the original points. Um, that's this guy. So I'll pull him to the front. Um, then I took the base point of the opposite side of the, of the triangle, or of the uh, cell, and I rotated it around the um, perpendicular frame along the hypotenuse. Remember that term? Yeah. I may not be an engineer, but I do know geometry. Um, and then I tied lines to those three points and then created the other triangle. So what questions do you have? 
Besides, can I please have some time to catch up? Yes. What, what, what came before that end? Uh, it was it was basically just the analysis of the original hypotenuse curve. Okay. Um, I, it was a way of not having to pull like a bunch of curves and stuff off of this. I didn't want to do that. So. Um, right. Yeah. So that's the middle guy, and um, you connected that guy to M. To M and the, the pink guy. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you um, kind of emulate.